very excited about Sea Otter today. He's pumped. We're here in Monterey at Sea Otter Classic 2023, and we're here to give you a little wrap up of our time we spent there. It started on Thursday. We're sitting here at the end of the expo. I'm here with Chris, Kendall, and Jono. My name is Ian, and we're gonna run you through what we saw at Sea Otter 2023. Yeah, it was a pretty exciting show. Good mix of vendor, new product launches, racing and activities throughout the weekend. We could start with maybe apparel and accessories. A couple of cool things coming out from Troy Lee Designs in the apparel world, that new ruckus pant. They've had the shorts in the past. That pant is a little bit more of a workwear fit and finish with pockets on the sides, good for downhill riding and also trail building. Um, they also have a new helmet, the Flow Line, that's replacing the A2. That thing looks pretty sweet, huh, Kendall? Yeah, as an A2 owner, I was Excited to see the new Flowline model and the value that that helmet brings is pretty impressive with like, you know, the standard kind of TLD fit and finish uh, along with the MIPS protection. Uh, not much more you could ask for. Yeah, also some sweet new goggles from Smith. That Rhythm DH goggle is pretty badass. Really excited to see a new goggle in the Smith line. They've been doing the same thing for a while and it's been working, but I think it's just cool to see them mix it up with a new design, uh, outriggers, tear off system. I mean, the whole the whole kit, yeah, chroma pop lenses, really cool. Nice, and then Jonathan, did you go over to check out some bike bags? You know, we're talking about accessories. I did, so the Evoc booth, I uh, tried out their Pro Road uh, bike travel case. We actually used that same case to get here with one of our bikes, so. Very familiar with that, but it's one of the, the top cases, I think, on the market for, for road bikes and gravel bikes with in, integrated cable routing. Um, so I think um, more and more people will be jumping to that case when they look and you can travel. leave your handlebars on forward with that one, right? Yeah, so drop bars, you can leave the handlebars on. Don't have to mess with, you know, popping off cables, doing all that stuff. It's just wheels off in a bike bag, wheels in their own bags, throw it all in there. Set up is like Easy. five minutes. Yep. Yeah, those things are flying off the shelves. It's hard for us to keep those in stock. We went to Crank Brothers and saw some of their new trail tools. A pretty sick expansion tank pump for seating the bead on tubeless setups in your garage. Had an integrated gauge. Really nice finish on that pump as well. Kind of looks stainless steel or titanium-ish. Yeah, the floor pump was super rad. And it was cool to see their like full assortment of hand pumps that they're carrying now. Um, something that I've kind of been looking into a little bit more with integrated frame storage becoming more common on bikes, like carrying something like that becomes a little bit more possible and it seems like they're keeping up with the times, yeah. If you live in a muddier climate, check out Crank Brothers Pedals. Their Malady for Enduro, their new Mallet Trail offering is a little bit of a lighter weight trail or gravel pedal. Um, really complements that classic egg beater platform and they're just expanding it with cool colorways. What other accessories or, or components. You guys saw some bike racks or bike stands? Yeah, I saw both of those actually. Um, so we went to the feedback booth. They have two new stands this year. Instead of the Pro HD, and then their Pro. Um, both have been upgraded in meaningful ways, really. Um, so the clamping mechanism and the quick release is just like more, I guess, thought out and well done. Cool. Um, so it's easier to remove the bike using a little spin wheel. I don't know what you actually call that thing. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, closure, yeah. yeah, closure mechanism. Yep. But uh, that was nice to see. And their HD is built really for e-bikes in mind. And we see more and more e-bikes at the show. Um, so I think having a heavier duty portable work stand is becoming more and more uh, important. And feedback has the answer for us. I saw a couple, I know you guys talked to Rocky Mounts, um, that swing integrated stand that has the interlocking arms mm -hmm. to keep the the bits like your fork and other places where bike racks typically rub on nice and safe yeah that no touch no rad. frame yeah no frame damage integrated lock on that so there's a thieves will typically as opposed to cutting bike locks these days they're going for the actual locking mechanism within the rack and just hammering it out with a flathead screwdriver uh, so they have this fully steel intercased locking mechanism that almost like a kryptonite looking bike lock locks into that you kind of just loop it around and swing it through so it reaches both both frames, swings out multiple positions, nice anodized blue bits on that on that rack. Yep. Super All smart the parts looking. are replaceable too. So if anything was to wear out, um, which is highly unlikely. I think the rep there said he had his on his car for like 80,000 miles, like yeah. through all the seasons, three, salt, everything and works great. Wow. Um, what about components? The new force was there, which was cool to see in person on a bike. A bunch of them were set up at Tram, and then the transmission was set up on a bunch of bikes. It's super obvious when you look at it. You can see the cassette with the little red ring around. It's like, oh, our own transmission. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's like the first thing I see. I mean, then obviously you look at the derailleur, and it's like, oh, wow, there's no derailleur hanger there. So. Yeah. I was surprised by the amount of that you saw on people's bikes already. Yeah. Like, 
every oh athlete gosh. there had yeah. the transmission already. I was yeah. like, man, FOMO, we, I need that. We <laughs> met up with Chris from SRAM on day one, and we we chatted with him for a good good half hour, nerding out about all the the nitty gritty details on transmission. And you know, it it is the talk of the town right now, but for a good reason. It's it's beautiful. I mean, I think beautiful is a uh, word that stuck out to me when you were talking about the drivetrains because like that force is beautiful yeah and the transmission is oh. like beautiful it's like you never really thought about drivetrains as being beautiful before it was all about performance and things like that but these things are like elevating the appearance of your bike yeah and i know i was talking to kendall about this and chris at sram but uh when we tested the 135 from yeti i was trying to like really put transmission to the test as well as that bike while we were out just clunking it through corners and standing up and like the harder i was on it trying to actually mess with it like the better it was it, it was almost laughable like okay cool that's when i would break a, a link yeah it's kind of intuitive to what we're used to yeah you always just let off the power but not anymore now it's more on power the x ramps on the teeth were really interesting where it just it has mapping within the derailleur to know exactly what cog it's on and it's not going to shift until it knows it's at a point that's going to go smoothly yeah i really enjoyed hearing about that x-sync technology that you mentioned basically the teeth on the cogs are engineered to pass the chain up and down at a certain point as they're spinning and that's what allows you to cruise through gears all at once so quickly it's pretty cool any other components on the road side of things so yeah uh on the road side ceramic speed but it's also mountain now and it's been mountain for a while but now they have two color schemes they have like the fox factory orange i don't know if they officially call it that and then they also have a turquoise one so the cage really accents um so if you have a yeti and that turquoise it's gonna look really good and if you have a fox factory orange fork they have an orange cage to match that so it looks it pops on nice. a black bike with an orange fork and the orange in the rear with the oversized pulley wheel looks really good what are the advantages of that ceramic speed upgrade for someone who might not know yeah so beyond the looks of it there's more to it <laughs> so <laughs> a lot more i should say there is uh, a bit of a, a watt saving so it's more efficient having the larger pulley wheels um, and we see that with the new transmission. Mm -hmm. They went to a larger pulley wheel. The magic wheel. The magic wheel. Well, that one's, <laughs> that one's different, but <laughs> <laughs> the larger pulley wheels. So it just allows the chain to like, I think be straighter and be more efficient. Yeah. And for the most part, the, and also like the cage, usually if you put that cage on there, if you don't have a long cage or something like that on your derailleur, sometimes you can run a bigger cassette in the rear too. Oh, nice. So. Do they have full derailleur offerings or is it just, uh, pulleys, wheels and cages, cages. pulley wheels and cages. Cool. Beyond that, they have headsets, they have bottom brackets. Mm -hmm. um, they, have, they, have, they have wheel bearing kits. They have lube. Yep, they have wheel bearing kits, yep. which, are, which are really nice. A lot of people do the upgrades in yeah. the, the wheel bearings. That's mm -hmm. pretty popular on the roadside. And nice. pre-wax pre chains, which are super fast. Like a race day chain, you put that on and it's more efficient. Yeah, they've got a lot, of, a lot of cool things. I mean, they're definitely like marginal gains, but for people that are willing to spend, you know, a thousand dollars to save a couple grams on their road bike like why not save a, why not spend a thousand dollars and get you know a few more watts like i can use all the help i can get these days so i'll spend the money i feel like we could likely go on about components forever uh before we depart though maybe we talk about wheels quickly what wheels did we check out kendall it's all about we are one i mean that new convergence wheel set i think has everyone's attention the profile of the inner rim itself you know it looks insane and it allows the spoke nipple interface to go straight instead of basically like bowing out as all previous systems had done um, and so they're finding that uh, spokes and nipples last way longer which is great to see uh, you know wheels are all about durability for me i'll spend whatever it takes to just have the most durable solution and so definitely uh, got an eye on that convergence wheel set what do you think about them like if you think about the kinematics of a wheel in a corner like it just looks like it's fast yeah like and it looks like it, it just does its job yeah, I think they're claiming a 32% strength increase, if I remember wow. correctly. Wow. So now the they're kind of union. like up to par with their DH wheels from a strength perspective with the weight of an Enduro wheel. Yeah. Um, so that's that's big news. That's impressive. Yeah, pretty yeah. wild. What about you guys? Any wheels? Tires. Tires. We're all, all about, about tires. tires. A lot of new tires out there. Yeah, so. we did see a lot of new tires. Terrabel actually has a new road tire. It's their first, I think, road tire that they came out with. So they have a 30 millimeter to start. I believe it's going to be a 28 as well. Um, they're going to have two different compounds. They'll have a light and supple and then a durable for winter riding. Cool. Um, I actually got to try out the light and supple, and so far I'm, I'm really liking them. Tan so, sidewalls on that? Tan sidewalls or black. So I bet two it looks options. pretty smart. Yep. Any tire inserts? Yes. Vittoria. Vittoria. Yep. Airliner yep. light. 
So for the X XC racers out there, mm -hmm. a lot of people have discovered that airliners are great for XC racing. I know it's been popular in the trail world for a while, um, but now they have a light option for XC racers. They're only like 50 grams, I believe, 50 to 55 yep. grams. Super lights, I think they said it's like the same weight as your sealant that you put in, so it's it's not even noticeable. Um, and it just protects the, the rim and also gives you a little more suspension. Um, and uh, looks pretty cool. I can't wait to try them out. Also yeah. from Kushkor, the trail offering for their inserts. Yeah, that new trail insert looks pretty rad. I've been in this position where the XC insert is as light as I want it to be, but not maybe not as protective as the Pro insert, which is super protective, but a little heavy. And that trail just hits right in the middle, and it's kind of right where I want to be. I just do one insert in the rear, and I think I'll definitely be picking up one of those. We also went over to Panaracer, and a lot of their stuff is, is the same. I mean, they had some colors um, in the Gravel King SKs uh, that were like unique special edition colors, but the tire that I saw that I really liked was like this Gravel King SK in a 700 by 28. Like I put it on my road bike and it was, I don't know, for some reason it was just dope. Uh, I just want that because like when I run in gravel races, I usually have like really narrow tires. Mm -hmm. and I think it'd be fun just to put it on my road bike, just like rip around with this high performance road bike with these Gravel King SKs with like all the tread on them. It'd be dope. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was pretty cool. They had it in like 28 and 30 and 32. Is it common to see gravel tires in a 28? No, not yeah. at all. No, it's yeah. pretty unique. Yeah, really uh, unique. Yeah, really unique. So that was, that's uh, sweet. It, it was really fun to, to like see. like a good BWR tire. Dude, exactly. Like BWR. San Diego, run that in a 30. Yeah. I might win. Not, I'm <laughs> Hear that? Hear that? <laughs> yeah, I guess more on the roadside, the GP5000 all season from Conti. Yeah, that was Conti. new. Yeah. Nice. So the GP5000 is probably our best selling road tire, and now they yeah. have an all season one. So if you're riding in wet conditions or you do uh, more spirited riding in the winter time, yep. um, I think it'd be a great tire for that. Yeah, it's not like a, I asked him, it's not like a gator skin. Like it doesn't no. have that much protection. It's like a high performance tire. Yep. With a little more protection. That's your pro model, right? The Gator skin. The the Gator skin is like the one that's. <laughs> <laughs> He's ask. messing with you. Leave him. Yeah. Florida yeah. Joe. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you know. Wild Florida man. I, how did you pick up on that? I didn't get it, dude, because I'm in mode right now, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I'm in Swing mode. Mode dying. All right, so we also checked out Pirelli. They have a new addition to their gravel lineup, the Cinturado RC. So in the past they had the H, which is like a faster rolling. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're correct. Yeah. yeah. And then the M. Centrado M, so it's more of a mud tire. It's kind of like hard and mud, you can kind of think about it. You know, yeah. I don't think that's what it actually stands for, no. but that's the way I remember it. Yeah, same. But they have a new one, the RC, and it's kind of a, a mix of the two. Fast rolling in the center, but it has the side knobs, so when you lean it over, you got that traction. Um, and I think that is the ideal tire for a lot of riding that I do in Utah, and I think I want to put them on our NV Mog that we have. Oof, that'd be good. That'd yep. be a good setup. Well, that sounds pretty rad. Speaking of your MOG, I heard they had some pretty sweet looking bikes over at the Envy booth this week. They sure did. They had uh, Alexi Vermeulen's MOG that he was racing actually at the at the race this weekend. Um, it was a pretty cool paint scheme. It was kind of like a engineering designed theme. So it was like a blueprint mm -hmm. and it had all the call outs of all the features that are on the frame and like how they designed it. But it wasn't the coolest paint scheme there. They actually have uh, a new Envy Melee Killer coming out. We got a kind of sneak peek at that. It said it's going to be a limited run. It's a really beautiful, like, deep blue color. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to want that thing. So demand's going to be high for it. Nice. Yeah, Jake has uh, the silver Melee, another person we work with. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wants to trade them in the <laughs> silver one to get the blue one now. Yeah. Um, so it's hot, and uh, hot. he wants it. Very yeah. hot. Nice. Yeah, I feel like uh, frame paint jobs were a big highlight of Sea Otter for me this year. There were some really good looking bikes out there. We are one had some beautifully painted arrivals there. They had the 170 with kind of like a retro Toyota looking paint job that picked at my heartstrings, that's <laughs> for sure. Like I am sold on, on white bikes with like gold lettering or like I just like a clean, yeah, it's clean. like white bike with a little pearlescent in there is like, is that for like all Dude, bike you, categories? Saw, because that's been on the roadside for a little while and people have been picking it up, but I'm like know, mountain I, and gravel I saw stuff. downhill bikes that were white. Okay. I saw trail bikes that were white. I saw gravel bikes that were white. Stumpy Evo in a white that was sick. Oh, that'd like, be sick. It, had, it was like white with almost like a cement rear kind of like chain stay that looked really clean. I don't know, just something about a good clean paint job. Shows the mud, but then when you wash it off, it's 
you know, nice and sparkly again. Speaking of, I heard you say Stumpy, and I went yeah. to Specialized, and I just immediately, World Cup, the epic World Cup that it just released, Dude. that thing is hot. Yeah. Hardtails are dead. I know <laughs> I know Track had one out for a while, but the Specialized, I think they did a little bit better job. The thing is super clean. Um, so it's like 75 millimeters of travel. It seems more serviceable. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's like a rear normal rear shock up in there yeah. versus like Trek hides it all. But yeah. uh, with the World Cup and the Specialized, that thing is clean yeah. looking. Yeah, and we had an athlete riding on it too yeah. this weekend, and he kind of ran us through that. Yep, he did. Um, that booth was popping. Yeah, yeah, like 24/7. Yeah, a lot yeah, of I think people for, were for new bike launches. That one probably took the show. Yeah, but we did have yeah. another new bike launch there. Uh, we had the SB135. That's that right. Launched. So that yeah. was a new one as well. Arguably cooler at the Yeti booth was Richie Rude's downhill bike. <laughs> <laughs> that Let's steal the show for yeah. you. Was that the they one? Did, they you know, had the DJ there was too. Pretty cool, yeah. But yeah. It was It'd be cool to see that downhill bike go to production. The linkage in that thing was very unique. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, it is great to see the community aspect of Sea Otter. It's a great kickoff to the bike season. It's, you know, that place where we can all chat tech, meet with vendors, and the crowds this year. The races were full. You know, the vendor village seemed busier than ever. The the chatter was real, and it's good to see all those familiar faces. Ian, what do you think about Sea Otter this year? Yeah, man, so I'm responsible for setting up our booth there. We have a team that we sponsored, Legion of Los Angeles, and uh, they did a signing today, which was great. Um, we set up the booth, and I think I registered in January sometime, and it was 90% sold out at that time. Wow. I spoke to the organizers, and it was the largest Sea Otter ever. So the most vendors ever, most participants, most attendees, um, it was just the biggest one ever. Um, it's the second one after COVID, so I think everyone was really excited. I did go last year, saw a lot of vendors, which was awesome, but this year, like Jono said, we got to see our influencers there as well. All the racers were there. Um, we have two athletes now, Lance Haydit and Hannah Otto in the Lifetime Grand Prix. This particular event kicks that off, which was really exciting. Um, so it was a great sea otter for me. Uh, it was nice to just see everybody in the cycling community out there and getting ready to get after it. Uh, it's been a long winter and, um, you know, it's starting to get warmer. It's definitely warm here. And uh, our sales have been picking up on competitivecyclist.com. And uh, yeah, it's just, like I said, it's just it's just great to see everybody. We're doing a lot of content this year. So I saw people from uh, Pivot. Uh, we're gonna go out there and make some content around that. I saw our pals at Cervelo that we just released a video about, which was great. I was over there with uh, Aaron and Cerise over at the Ibis tent, met the president of Ibis. We're gonna go out there and make some content. So just a lot of exciting stuff happening at competitive cyclists and in the industry. And it was great to just put names with faces. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been fun chauffeuring you around the show virtually, giving you that inside look. Please reach out to Gearheads, uh, ask them all the questions. Um, you know, they, they have meetings with these reps and talk the nitty gritty details just like we do for content, but from a sales perspective. So they have everything you need from compatibility, fit, finish, and can help you build up your dream bike. Leave a comment below and let us know um, what kind of content you'd like to see out of this year's bike season. We've got some fun stuff lined up on the gravel side, on the enduro side. We're gonna be doing some more bike launches and bike testing. So this is a kickoff to an awesome bike season and we're super stoked to be here with you. Follow and subscribe for more and we'll see you guys on the trails. And the road. See you. See you out there.